Welcome to Goblin. You are here. If Tom hadn't left his sweater in his locker, if he hadn't gone back to get it, and if he hadn't passed the main office on the way, the whole dark night could have been avoided. Hold up a minute, Tommy. Got one more run for you. Damn it. Tom had a fun night planned ahead, a great one. Pizza, beer, old movies, feet on the table, and the open prairie of the living room knew himself. Where to, Jerry? Before his boss even said the city name, Tom knew he'd scratch his evening plans. He never said no to Jerry. Goblin. Goblin. Jeez, Jerry, Goblin's what, an hour away? I haven't been a Goblin in something close to 30 years. To Goblin might have been an hour's drive, but there and back would make it two. I know it, Jerry said, making his most sympathetic face. Cigar smoke rose from the ashtray on his desk and curled about his big belly. And I'm going to give you triple for the run. The recipient gave us some extra, wants him done his way. Very specific. Triple? Wow, what is it, Jerry? Jerry shrugged and looked to a stack of papers. It's a pain in the ass is what it is. Obsessive instructions, and he wants it delivered at midnight. No kidding. Maybe there's a party going on. Who knows? But I'd send you out with a carload of uncuffed prisoners for this kind of money. There's a whole list of demands attached to the crate. Crate? Oh, the box. Tom removed his yellow ball cap and ran greasy fingers through his greasy hair. Triple. That added up to 120 a mile. What with Goblin hanging at least 70 miles north, and maybe even more, Tom would certainly check. Not to mention the 70 back. He stood to make a cool $168 on a last-minute run. Tom could drop the box off at midnight and be in front of his TV by 2 in the morning. Hell, he could drink all day from there. Just follow those directions to a T, Tommy. The fella already made good on his money. Now it's just up to us not to mess it up. The union had the drivers going at 18 an hour or taking 40 cents in the mile. Most of the guys opted for the hourly because most of the guys factored in the, dead, the dreaded long wait upon delivery. But Tom had been driving for 16 years and he knew this guy there and that guy here and by the time the option was granted, he'd had his routes down pat. And if there was an unexpected delay, well, that was okay too. Tom loved to count the miles. He wasn't about to give up that small distraction. You know, Jerry, Tom said smiling, I kissed my first girl up in Goblin, Alice Pratt. She bit clean through my lower lip. Tom pulled his lip out for Jerry to see. Geez, that's something, Tommy. Maybe you could uh, look her up. Tom once knew Goblin. His mother had taken him there three summers in a row. His 11th, his 12th, and his 13th birthdays. Three summers spent swimming in Goblin's deep lakes, not to mention the ice-cold Blackwater River, on whose banks Tom's mouth was ambushed by Alice's after she fooled him into thinking he was getting a kiss without a bite. He played games in the West Fields, walked through Parish Park. Still standing in Jerry's office, he had a detailed memory of passing the hedges on the east side and driving between two giant, the two giant topiaries, framing the highway coming in from the south. He recalled the savage tour of the slaughterhouse and the pleasant one of the Hardy Carroll Goblin Zoo. He recalled the owls, too. Postcards and photos of the owls, keepsakes his mother had purchased downtown. Tom smiled. $168 was a lot of money to revisit his youth, a place he remembered enjoying if he remembered it right. It's already 10.15, Jerry said. You better get moving if you're going to reach Goblin by midnight. Goblin. Thanks, Jerry. I'm on it. Thanks for the gig. Thank you, Tommy. I was planning on making the run myself before you showed up. I took a long pull on the cigar, then pointed at Tom with it. The box is already on the lift. You're going to need that. It's heavy as hell. And remember, he held up his hands like it's just my job to say it more than once. Make sure you follow those directions. The box was easy to see from across the warehouse. It was tall, taller than Tom. When he climbed the lift and tried to move it, the resistance told him they didn't have much of a chance without some help. 
All right, delivering lead? He removed his cap again and wiped his hairline dry. He wasn't even sure how Jerry got the thing where it was. Crossing the warehouse again, he started the smaller truck and backed it up, got out, and started the lift. It made a nasty squawking sound Tom had never heard him make before. The sucker's testing the lift. By the time the machine got it level with the truck, it looked to Tom like the gears were going to fold in on themselves. He climbed up into the truck, took the power dolly, and rolled his lip under the box. Before trying to move it, Tom spotted the instructions nailed to the wood. Deliver to Dean Crawford, 726 Rolling Hills Drive, Rolling Hills, Goblin, Michigan, 48929. Content, one box, eight feet by three feet, 110 pounds. You're more than 110 pounds, buddy, he read on. Special, do not deliver before midnight, 12 a.m. Recipient will not be home to receive before midnight. And do not deliver past 12.30 a.m. Recipient will not be home to receive after 12.30 a.m. If recipient is not home or does not answer the door between 12 and 12.30, or if driver misses this window of time, destroy contents of box. Wait. What the fuck? Here, Jerry wrote in pen, Customer's real serious about this. No typo. Destroy box if you can't reach him. And there was more. Do not attempt to open box before delivery. Make sure box is secure. Customer will not receive box if attempt to open is evident. Tom shook his head. Triple the money or not, this was a weird gig. Deliver the box alone. Do not load on truck with other items. Make sure box is alone in the truck. Do not... Get in the rear of truck with box and truck door closed. Okay, Tom said, now you're telling me shit I learned 16 years ago, buddy. Think I'm going to lock myself in? Do not stop to check on box. Once back door is secured, do not open until you have arrived at 726 Rolling Hills Drive, Rolling Hills, Goblin, Michigan. And this... If box should fall or any noise that indicates as much should occur, do not attempt to check on box. Keep driving to destination. Tom grunted. Well, I ain't gonna let it fall, buddy. There was one more instruction, followed by another note from Jerry and Penn. Do not communicate to other drivers where you are delivering box two. Recipient wants strict anonymity and insists on discretion. So don't go yapping on the CB, Tommy. Tom let out a long, dull whistle. He'd been given some pretty far out orders before, but never, not once had he been had he been instructed to destroy a package if no one was there to get it. He'd had to bring a few back, of course, and sometimes they had to drop it off somewhere else, but never this. Goblin and back, he said. Come on, we could do that. He tried to move the box by way of the dolly, but it simply wouldn't budge. 110 pounds my ass. He found that if he sort of knelt and put his shoulder into it, if he put all his weight into the middle and lower part, the box slid. And he was sweating when he finally got it against the wall. He had to take a second before wrapping the straps around the box and securing them to the truck wall. Then he secured the power dolly to the opposite wall. I won't be seeing you again until a goblin, and we're both better for it. He got down from the truck and pulled the rope, slamming the door closed. After locking it, he walked to the cabin and stopped at the driver's side mirror. He looked at himself. You haven't been a goblin in 30 years. And he smiled. You think he'll recognize the city? You think the city will recognize you? He heard a sound like a hammer falling a short distance to the ground. He looked over his shoulder, deep into the warehouse, then climbed into the cabin at last. Hey, don't let mysterious boxes freak you out, Tommy, he told himself. And don't follow directions from people who don't know any better than you do. Sadie, thank you for having me. This is an awesome event. We all love you. Allison, all the animals, me, all the writers. Welcome to Goblin, people. You are here. <laughs>